If you've ever looked back at Eddie Van Halen's amp rigs, you may have noticed a suspicious box in there. What is it? Is it a EQ power amp? Some mega maximizer? A tapilator? Uh, no, what it is, is a Palmer speaker simulator. Let's discuss. For ages, I assumed Eddie was running into this and maybe using it as a speaker simulator, like sending that to the front of house and you know, he was hearing his calves, but out through the PA, it was uh, hitting speaker sim. So I bought one of these ages ago and was like, he's definitely not doing that. Uh, the, it, no bueno. So uh, this is my buddy, Eric Jackson's who kindly lent it to me. What this is, is actually a pretty decent toolbox. Let me show you. you. Run your amp in, and then you run out to your speaker cab. Cool, you're still rocking over there. Now you've got four line outs that you could send to your effects processors. Uh, they are not speaker level, they're line level. So you could go to an Eventide, a Lexicon, a Digitech, whatever you wanna run out to. Super cool. Um, that is what Eddie was using this for. Now I got that information from an amazing Tone Talk episode with Bob Bracha. Go back and find it, I'm gonna put the link below. That's a must listen to. So what's also cool about this box is it's a load box. So let's say you don't want to run out to your speaker cab. Well, you go straight into here, no speakers anywhere, and you could take one of those line outs and go to your DAW. Super cool. Now you could put an I Oh, heavy. Now you can put an IR on that. You're good to go. Let's say you want to use a, you're like, what's a great IR? Um, probably one that Michael made. I don't know. You know, I'll put links below. Uh, now, if you don't want that, you, you've got an analog speaker sim right here. And uh, you got a little, little touch of EQ happening right over here. You've got your volume to go to the DAW. Um, yeah, these are basically, here's those lines and here's to the DAW. So why didn't this take off in everyone's racks and everyone's studios? Well, this was before the reactive load boxes came along. Now, uh, you remember my good friend, the Fryett Power Load, Power Load IR. You know, there's also the Sur reactive loads, two notes. Once people figured out, oh my gosh, it's not enough just to have a load box. You also have to simulate how the cabinet and speakers are affecting the tone. So with, you know, little doodads and dadudes, um, they'll shape that and get you that nice speaker curve, that feel that feels like you're running through a 412, even if you're not. This is old school style. You know, it's just like flat right in there. So I'm gonna show you this and then I'll show you against uh, my power load IR, which is uh, my main IR load box that I've got over there. I'm gonna be using one of my new cabinet IRs. I have this little pack of uh, four main IRs, which I love very much. I use these all the time. But uh, you know, you can use uh, whatever you want. Let us check it out. This is the super lead going straight into the Palmer, uh, set to flat and normal speaker simulator. It's, it's pretty uh, awful, right? What about brighter? Mellow? Ah, that's much better. And a bright. That's kind of it. Okay, I mean, it's usable. I think it's usable. 
let's compare it to the analog speaker sim to the Powerload IR. So it's like state of the art versus, you know, like a, geez, what year is it? 20 plus year old version of it. Hang on, let's rewire. Now I'm plugged into the Powerload IR, the analog output. <laughs> Back to the Palmer. Um, I haven't listened back. I think the power load sounds better too. I mean, it's nice having the sweepable controls there. Um, and we're using a reactive load. So that alone is going to take it to the next level. So the reactive load, like I said before, is using components to simulate the feel and the response curve, and which translates to a frequency curve as well, uh, of a 412 cabinet. That's what we're getting here. I'm running eight ohms because that's what this Palmer is. It's an eight ohms. It doesn't have a switchable uh, ohms change. So I switch the head to eight ohms using the eight ohms input on the uh, Fryette, which is switchable to 4, 2, 4, 8, 16. Uh, I mean, it's super versatile. All right, going back to, let's just compare reactive load to non-reactive load. I'm going to put one of my IRs in the box, uh, the computer box. So they're getting the same IR. You're just hearing the difference of an older style non-reactive load and a new style reactive load. <laughs> Sounds okay. There's something kind of annoying about the feel. Let's switch over to the Fryet. Reactive load via the Fryet power load. The Fryant has a way to go completely not reactive mode. So this is a more one-to-one -one comparison. Um, and then, you know, they might actually sound the same. I have no idea. This is the Fryant full reactive mode. Uh, 
So on the top and the bottom, you can go half reactive or fully non-reactive. So you could do any combination of that. This is the top end. That's completely out. Here's the bottom end. That's completely out. So again, all the way reactive, halfway, totally just load box. It's like a cardboard box. Okay. This is the Fryet fully reactive. The Fryet non reactive. The Palmer, which is non reactive. So here you could run the line off the Palmer and then another line to effects and you get wet, dry, wet. The Palmer, it's a pretty decent box. I mean, it's, it sounds pretty good and super functional. So, you know, they come in around two to 300 bucks. Uh, I mean, at that, a little more, and you could get a fully reactive thing with all these controls and that. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a little no-brainer, unless you get it really cheap, and then it's awesome. So, um, yeah, and, you know, it has a cool pedigree. So, there you go. Thank you, gang, for watching. We'll catch you later.